Hola, buenos dias. Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you could join me for another video. It's your girl here, Daniela, Miss Four Lizard. And today I'm going to be setting up my mood tracker in my wellness planner, in my happy planner. Um, and my mood tracker is really simple, straightforward, effective, uncomplicated, but still really fun and functional. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, this is my January mood tracker. I like to use my monthly spread in my wellness planner for my mood tracker and so uh, I'm gonna be setting this up for February the upcoming month so if you're interested in checking out how I set up my mood tracker and hearing about why I set it up how I use it what it means to me just keep on watching All right, so this is my mood tracker for the month of January. It's currently January the 24th, and I figured it was time to start setting up my February mood tracker, and uh, I wanted to film it and take you along on the journey. So this is actually um, one of the planners that I have Franken planned or combined into one large mega franken planner this is the uh your soul is golden wellness planner from the happy planner this is the planner that these pages come from and for uh the monthly calendar because i don't necessarily use it as like a planning type of calendar i like to use the monthly spread as a mood tracker and my mood tracker is really simple but fun and effective when what I do is I basically outline a shape for each day and then I fill in each shape with a particular color that corresponds to an emotion. And again, this is super um, uncomplicated. I've seen some beautiful, really complicated bullet journal type of mood tracker spreads and those are gorgeous. I don't really want to uh, spend a lot of time on my mood tracker necessarily and um so this is perfect for me i i don't really need to to be absolutely stunning um but i do want to have like uh an, the ability to kind of take a step back and take a look at the whole month and get uh, a, a big picture perspective of my moods and emotions so let me put this to the side and start setting up my uh, mood tracker here and I'm gonna go into the month of February here um, this is the February divider how to protect your vibe beautiful I love this planner so much and again this is really really simple it's a very straightforward mood tracker it's very easy to set up so i highly recommend um, setting up a mood tracker like this that's really simple so that way you can uh, just set it up real quick and get to using it so what i like to do first is i like drawing a shape on each um on each day let me pull these pages out i think that'll be a little bit easier for me and let's get to sketching out shapes and the shapes have no particular significance when i first started doing this i actually just did all um all squares <laughs> oh actually the first time that i ever set up a mood tracker like this i actually just ended up coloring the entire square for the day and you can do that you know you don't have to set up shapes at all you can just color in the entire day but for me i felt like it was a little bit too much like i didn't want to color the whole box i felt like the box is pretty large and so um i didn't feel like coloring the whole thing every single day but if i just outlined a little shape um it ended up being a lot easier to you know color so we're just drawing a bunch of shapes here and i i go from drawing uh circles to squares to clovers um it is whatever you want it to be the shapes don't really have a significance for me um maybe one day i'll try to like make them have a significance but for now uh, they're just fun shapes. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, heart on a Valentine's Day. Let's finish up uh, drawing these shapes. And 
and there we go we've set up the entire month with shapes and then the next thing i do is i set up my legend here and i just uh, draw out a couple of boxes all the way to the end and then i decide what emotions i'm going to fill them with so let's start with drawing out these boxes and i like to leave um one line's worth between the boxes so let's set this up and i think i only have room for eight boxes so we're just gonna leave it like that and then i decide what emotions i'm going to track in each box so let me pull for a pen here i have my trusty uniball all right and i have my uh, my legend here from last month that i can kind of reference so i kind of follow a loose format from like my best most positive emotion to my more negative emotions but it's not necessarily in a perfect linear order because for me emotions and moods don't really work that way like for example for me like the difference between being irritable and low energy isn't uh, like a really drastic difference. Like they're both kind of negative emotions, but one isn't necessarily better than the other. And I definitely want to change up the colors that I have in the legend. Uh, for example, like content and calm for me are a little bit too similar. So I want to change that up a little bit. Same with low energy. I feel like low energy kind of also is similar to content i mean they're obviously different but when i look like big picture at my entire monthly spread it's a little bit hard to kind of distinguish those two at a glance and i kind of want to be able to just glance at it and get like an idea of my the range of my moods and emotions throughout the month so we're going to start off with the first two i do want to keep these two i think they work well for me so we're gonna start off with highest self and I'm going to write the, the emotions this time on the bottom underneath the square. So we'll start off with highest self. This is my best emotion. Um, this is, I feel great, I feel good, I feel positive, I feel on top of the world, I feel capable um, of you know engaging in healthy habits meeting my goals being productive feeling focused great concentration great mood like everything is like 10 out of 10 that's my highest self and i feel like that is my goal i want to look back and have my entire month uh, these pink squares but and this light pink millennial pink it's my favorite color it's the color of my soul and so that's why i chose uh, that color to be my highest self and then the emotion after that is happy go lucky and this is like nine out of ten it's like almost all the way there but not quite there there's just i don't know exactly how to describe the difference between highest self and happy go lucky happy go lucky i'm happy i'm feeling good um but maybe my concentration's not the best or there's just one thing maybe maybe i feel like a little bit irritated or in the morning and then it like goes away for the rest of the day i don't know it's hard to explain but it's like not necessarily all the way there but still i'm feeling pretty good like nine out of ten and then the next emotion that i want to uh, track um, here in my January I have content and um, I think I'm gonna go with that one I'm gonna keep that one content so content I feel good but I don't necessarily feel like you know on top of the world or even like super cheery I feel pretty pretty happy but like I'm kind of you know feeling uh, a bit neutral um as well like i'm not you know sh jumping for joy but i'm definitely got a smile on my face and then from there we have calm and um i kind of want to change calm because for me calm is kind of really similar to content 
so maybe I'll go for neutral. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a solid neutral. So neutral is I don't particularly feel happy, warm or fuzzy inside. I but I don't feel bad either. I'm just very like neutral. Um, you know, things could be better, but things could be worse. Kind of emotion like you know we're solidly in the middle, and then the next couple of motions I do want to keep irritable um, I don't feel this emotion often actually I'm very much uh, someone who's more sad than I am irritable but sometimes I do feel irritable so I'm going to keep that emotion and then next we have low energy and then we have tired and sad and anxious and I think I think I am going to keep a low energy, but I'm going to call it sluggish. Sluggish. Sometimes there's days where I just feel tired and sleepy and like I just want to close my eyes and sleep and I feel low energy and I feel like low energy. I mean, it's the same. It means the same thing like sluggish, low energy, but sluggish kind of captures the energy a little bit more. And then for the last two boxes, I'm going to go with sad. Again, not an emotion I feel too often, but um, I do sometimes feel sad. And then last we have anxious. And that's not necessarily to say that sad is better than anxious or sluggish is better than sad. Again, I don't really follow like a true linear sequence when it comes to moods and emotions. These are all kind of in my mind equally bad, but um, they're just bad in different ways. But honestly, probably anxious is my worst emotion that I feel. I'd rather feel sluggish or sad than feel anxious because for me, anxious is a very nervous energy and it's hard for me to concentrate. I just feel like this worry in the back of my mind and it's hard for me to focus, to concentrate, whereas um, if I'm sad or irritable, I can still focus and concentrate. Um, sluggish, I can concentrate as well, but it's a little bit harder for me but for some reason like being anxious is the most uncomfortable feeling out of all of these negative emotions so okay we followed our legend from january pretty closely but we're just definitely going to change up the um the colors so let's look for uh my colors here and I want to use my Tombow markers because I keep all of my Tombow markers like in my uh, like my pencil pouch here. And before these, all these colors came from different types of markers. Like some are Tombow, some are like highlighters, some are uh, like another type of pen. And I kind of keep those separate as well. So it was whenever I needed to fill out my mood tracker, I would be pulling for like three different pencil pouches. And I kind of just want to stick with Tombow markers this time around so that I don't have to pull for so many pencil pouches. I have them all kind of lined up in a row. And yes, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, I still wanna keep um, anxious as this bright green because uh, for me, like feeling anxious, I feel almost nauseous. And I really want the colors to be different from each other so that way I can really quickly see like uh, the emotions uh, from a big picture perspective when I look back. And then for sad, I'm gonna go with this deep, deep blue because that is such an iconic emotion for sadness. And then for sluggish, I think I'm gonna go with a dark gray. Let me pull for this dark gray here because when I'm feeling sluggish, everything just seems like kind of dull to me. I don't wanna do anything. So I'll we'll go for this gray. And then irritable, we're gonna go with a deep red for irritable because uh, irritable, I'm angry. Um, so red is such a classic um, uh, emotion, I mean, classic color for anger. So we'll go with the red. And then neutral, we're gonna go with 
a really soft color. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna go with this really, really light pink beige. You can barely see it. Um, neutral, that's perfect. And then for Content, Happy Go Lucky, and Highest Self, I kind of want these to be different shades of pink. It's interesting how like, for me, feeling happy and feeling great, like there's not too much difference between those uh, emotions and those, you know, states of mind but there are much bigger differences between different types of negative emotions. It kind of reminds me of like that line in, I think it's Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I think it's that book. Um, there's a really famous first line. I think it goes, happy families are always happy in the same way. Unhappy families are always unhappy in their own way. All right, so I've picked out three of my markers here and we're just gonna go from um, highest self, which I'll make this really bright pink. And then I'll create a gradient of pink all the way down to content. Next one is happy go lucky. It's a little bit lighter than highest self. And lastly, we have content, which is um, just a little bit lighter than happy go lucky. And then it kind of works out because neutral is this really light color, but it has a tinge of pink in it. So it kind of all works out nicely. And actually I have to go ahead and color how I felt on the 23rd. And let's see, I felt pretty good um, on the 23rd. I would say I felt happy go lucky. And so I'm gonna pull for this pink. I think it's a bit different than this pink that I have here. But I, again, like, I don't know where this pen is. <laughs> the one that I initially colored that pink square with. It's in one of my pencil bags. But that's why I wanted to make sure that I used all Tombow markers for this, uh, for February's Legend. Because um, I tend to, like, lose where I put some of these other non-Tombow markers. So there we go. There we have my legend. And that's it. That's all. That was a really, really quick mood tracker. Really simple. And um, it is such a great tool to like keep track of your mood and emotions and to get like this big picture uh, look at your range of emotions and your mental health, your well-being. I really like mood tracking because it's a great way to stay informed about your own mental health and well-being. If you see that you're like staying in these turbulent emotions a lot and it's not, you know, one or two or even three bad days, but a whole, you know, week's worth, a whole month's worth of those emotions, then it kind of raises a red flag and you're kind of confronted with the actual hard facts, the data, and you see that it is maybe time to uh, either make some real changes in your life, um, you know, talk to a therapist, seek help. It's a good way to make sure that you're staying on track of yourself. I am a strong believer that one should really know oneself and you can only know oneself through constant and consistent observation. And so mood tracking really helps with just knowing yourself. So when I look back at this monthly spread of mine, I'm happy to see that I had a lot of good days this month, I think. I think I stayed between my highest self and feeling content. There were a couple of days where, you know, I feel, I felt just content, you know, like I am approaching just feeling neutral, you know, not good, not bad, but just kind of in the middle. But I seem to stay around feeling content, happy, go lucky, or even my highest self. I'm really happy looking back at this month to see that I had so many good days. One exception is the 2nd of January. You can see I had a very mixed day. And so I generally tend to just feel one emotion throughout the day, or at least there's just uh, one emotion that kind of wins out all the other emotions. But there are days where I kind of do fluctuate between emotions and it's hard for me to decide where I fall on the legend. Um, if I experience a lot of different emotions. And so when that happens, I just tend to color the shape in with various shades from my legend. 
And so on the 2nd of January, I started off the day feeling really anxious. And so that's the green that you see there. And then that kind of progressed into feeling irritable. And then that kind of progressed into low energy. And But then I ended the day kind of content. Um, I managed to kind of work through those emotions. And I actually also worked out a lot that day. And so that kind of calmed me down. And I also put this arrow here on the side to kind of show the trajectory of my emotions that day. And then the next day I felt pretty good. But then at the end of the day, I felt kind of tired and sad. And so that that's why this diamond here has this pink um to purple transition and then i think that also happened on wednesday the 5th and actually really funny this day is when i started my period so that kind of makes sense um it's interesting because when i was growing up i never really had a lot of mood swings when it came to my period um, my menstruation but then as i've gotten older and especially in the last two years or so um, I have been feeling a little bit more moody around the time that my period starts. So that's kind of, that's kind of funny to me. Um, anyways, that is my mood tracker. I hope you enjoyed uh, checking out this video. I'm excited to start filling in my February mood tracker um, once the month starts. But yeah, let me know um, how you track your moods, if you track your moods, if you're interested in starting to track your moods. And yeah, let me know any tips that you may have for mood tracking and how you keep up a good mood. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.